If you have parents who are not Muslim, you should still pray for them. If you have relatives or friends who are not Muslim, you can always pray for them while they're alive. For what? Primarily for guidance, for the blessings of Allah, starting with guidance, for the goodness, starting with guidance. Everything you say, may Allah bless you, grant you goodness, may Allah protect you, protect you from shaitan so that you can see the guidance, bless you so that you can be blessed with the guidance, uh, grant you goodness so that you can start off with the goodness of guidance, and then all other goodness. And indeed, you pray for their good health. There is nothing wrong in praying for your loved ones, your friends, your family, and others to say, may Allah Allah grant you uh, blessings in the sense of health. May Allah protect you uh, in the sense of giving you goodness by protecting you from shaitan. Yes, but giving you good health. That's my mother. That's my father. That's perhaps my brother or sister, my child, my uh, whoever else it may be, my spouse, for example. So you are allowed to pray for them when it comes to sickness and illness. You want them to be cured when you want uh, anything while they're alive. You can pray for them. The only restriction is after they've died, there's only one thing you cannot do. And that is to pray to Allah to forgive them because they didn't believe in that Allah whom you are calling out to at all. There goes. So Allah says, leave it between me and him. You don't get involved. Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. I hope you understand this. And this is why when Ibrahim, the Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him, alayhi salam, made a dua. Initially, he was making a dua for forgiveness or he was promising to make a dua for forgiveness for his father. And Allah says, you know what? You don't do that. Leave it to us. You know, he didn't believe in us. So what's the point of you asking on his behalf when he was supposed to do that himself? He didn't believe in us. So he probably doesn't even want you to call out to me. Subhanallah. Leave it to Allah. Allah is the most merciful, the most forgiving, the most just and the most wise. And with those qualities of his, he knows what he's going to do. I am not going to uh, be able to do that which Allah has prohibited. Subhanallah. So people ask, am I allowed to say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un when a non-Muslim passes away? The answer is yes. That's not a dua. That's not a supplication. That's a statement of truth. What does it mean? It's a verse of the Quran. It means we belong to Allah. We as in all the creatures of Allah, Muslim, non-Muslim and, uh, and everything Allah's created, we belong to Allah and ultimately we're all going to return to Allah. That's all you're saying. So there is nothing wrong. Don't be conned by people who tell you, you can't say that because these people are not Muslim. You can and say that inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un is a verse of the Quran. We are saying, O oh Allah, uh, we belong to Allah and we will all return to Allah. Indeed, they will return to Allah and so will we. So uh, Alhamdulillah, that's just a little clarification because people have been asking, especially with this virus, a lot of people have lost loved ones. And when they say inna lillahi, they say, how could you say that the person was not a Muslim? You can, you should and you must. But there is only one exception and I've already explained that to you. While they're alive, you can pray for them and their health and their wealth and a lot of other goodness. But primarily, don't forget to ask for their guidance. And every time you say something, make dua that uh, your intention should be that this person achieve the guidance. When you say, may Allah protect you, you mean protect you from uh, shaitan's path and bring you onto the path of guidance. When you say, may Allah bless you, I've already explained all of that. May Allah bless all of us. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.